guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you uh, my November wrap-up part two. I was going to make one big video to wrap up Yo Crap Read It Not in December, but since I talked so much, I decided I was going to split it up and do everything I read in November 1st. Um, I recently was watching Jennifer over at Insert Literary Pun here, and she was talking about how she always tries to keep her videos like under... 10 or 12 minutes, and I thought that was a great goal to shoot for, and I'm going to try to keep this one under 10 minutes. So let's just get right into it. first book that I finished in the latter part of November was The Killers of the Flower Moon, The Osage Murders and the Birth of the FBI by David Grant. Um, this was amazing, y'all. I gave this five stars. It's about um, the Osage murders. So there was all these Indians in Osage County, Oklahoma, who were dying of mysterious causes. Some of them were getting really sick and died. Some of them were being murdered. And it was just like a widespread phenomenon where like most of the families in that county, most of the Indian families in that county, lost someone. And the first two parts of this book, you think this conspiracy to murder them was all perpetrated by one man. And then in the third part, David Graham sort of pulls back a little bit and he takes you sort of into modern times and shows you how these murders are affecting the present day and how the conspiracy has sort of, was sort of more than this one man. And it's a really fascinating book. I highly recommend this book. I gave it, like I said, I gave it five stars. It's probably going to be my favorite nonfiction book of the year. I just, and like, not only for the content, but just as someone who wants to write nonfiction books someday or would at least like to give it a, an attempt, this was like a great example of exactly the kind of book I would love to write. Um, you know, it was very narrative nonfiction. You know, it's very like a regular fiction book, I would highly recommend this to anybody who's not a huge nonfiction person because it just reads like fiction and it's got a lot of pictures in it. It's just a really great, great book. And I actually, I read this as an ARC that I got from my ARC table at work, but I gave it to my mom to read and she loved it so much, she sent it off to my aunt. So I don't have my ARC anymore. So I had to pick uh, check this out of the library. And it was nice because actually, like, this has maps in the front of it, which the ARC didn't have, and the pictures seem to be a little bit a little better quality in the um, regular edition. So it's just a really great reading experience all around, and I highly recommend it. I then finished The Glass Universe, How the Ladies of the Harvard Observatory Took the Measure of the Stars by David Sobel. Um, I liked this okay, but it definitely wasn't on the same level as Killers of the Flower Moon. This was about the women who worked as human computers in the Harvard Observatory in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, um, specifically like between, I would say like 1890 and um, 1920, and it's and, and it goes further than that, but that's the bulk of the book. And it was a really fascinating read, but I wasn't nearly as engaged with this book as I was with the first one. First of all, it goes really into the minutia of astronomy, which I don't really care that much about. And secondly, for a book that's a lot about women, or supposed to be about women, um, there was a lot of discussion of the male staff in the observatory, so that kind of bothered me. Um, it was okay. There's some really great pictures on this one, too. Um, and then a lot of the, some of the women that are talked about, um, are, it was sort of showing the power of nepotism because a lot of them worked, were like sisters or cousins or something somehow related to the people already at the observatory. So I didn't feel like it was demonstrating women who had a fair shake at it. There was one woman that they talked about, um, Will I mean of Fleming, who was an Irish immigrant, I believe, and she worked her way up. So she was pretty cool, but then she died, like, pretty early on in the book, and so we don't, she wasn't mentioned like that much, so that was kind of disappointing. So, this was okay. I wouldn't really recommend this unless you already really love astronomy. Um, it wasn't nearly as exciting as I was hoping it would be. But reading this didn't finish my um, Dewey Decimal Challenge for the year. This counted for the 500 category. So I did complete a challenge with this book. So it was a great, it was a good thing for that. But I just found it pretty interesting that it took me four days to read Killers of the Flower Moon. And it took me like 10 days to read this. And this one was shorter than Flower of the Moon. So it was okay, but I wouldn't really recommend it to anybody. 
I then finished my textbook for the semester, Systems Analysis for Librarians and Information Professionals, second edition by Larry and Osborne and Margaret Nakamura. Uh, all I gotta say about this is I think this is terribly outdated, and I don't understand why they're using it as a textbook in a gradual level uh, systems analysis course. Like, come on now. We did have um, some newer textbooks that were recommended reading, but this was the only one that was required. And I actually think they should have made one of the recommended books that required text, even if it was a lot more expensive. Just because I felt like this one was, you know, using technology, talking about technology that don't, nobody would ever use. For example, floppy disk. Like, come on now. This was published in 2000. And, like, come on now, that's just ridiculous. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody. Even if you are interested in systems analysis, just go get a newer version, because there's plenty of newer versions out there. All right, moving on. Finally, I finished Why Not Me by Mindy Kaling. Uh, I read this as an audiobook, driving out to my brother's house for Thanksgiving, and then on the way back, I finished it. Um, this is a pretty standard celebrity memoir of Mindy Kaling's talking about. Um, a little bit about The Office, but this is mostly about her um, time on the Mindy Project and like the process she went through to pitch it and to get funding for it. And um, She also talks about a little bit of her college life, and she also has this pretty standard celebrity like beauty, secrets chapter, and then there's also a chapter about the day in her life, which was pretty fascinating. She worked like 15 hours a day when her show is in production, which is crazy, sometimes more than 15 hours a day. And this book has, you know, the standard celebrity pictures and, you know, just it's supposed to be funny. There's also a chapter of fake emails, and I did not, I actually did not like that chapter. I thought it was pretty annoying. But uh, this is a pretty standard celebrity memoir, nothing to write home about. Uh, I wouldn't have read this except we drove out to see my brother. Um, on the way there, we were driving in the dark, so I couldn't read. So this was a pretty good audiobook to listen to. Mindy Kaling narrates it, and it's funny, but there's also some times where I was rolling my eyes, and like I said, the chapter with the fake emails, I just found super annoying. Um, I would only recommend this if you're like a super Mindy Kaling fan, or if you're like me and you're going on a road trip, and you need something fun and light to listen to on the way out there. There was also some changes between the audiobook and the book, including the chapter about a day in her life was not even in the audiobook. And then also, she has a chapter about mentoring, and she has her, um, her personal mentor, Greg Daniels, the office showrunner, um, come on and he talks, he reads his portion, and he even mentions how in the book he made some like really funny joke and sort of laughed off the question, and he said, and quote, he said, I felt bad for doing that, so here I'm going to write something better for the audiobook, and he does, and so it was really interesting to compare the book and the audiobook. So anywho, again, don't necessarily recommend this, but it was a fun listening experience. Alright, so that's everything I read in the last part of the of November. I'm currently reading The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, but if I finish that before November, I'll just throw it into my December wrap-up. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving if you celebrate, and you're having a great end of the month. I'll talk to you later. Bye!